What am I looking at? What are you looking at? I'm going to do an update today to show you the landing. There is the landing where the hummingbirds can now feed. So they've got the window behind them and then they have this whole area. This is all new. Now you saw some of it was here before, but Gary's changed a lot of this. See the coyote roll bars? There's Kitty up on the deck. She's inspecting and making sure everything's going well. There's a hummingbird feeding there. Now, Kitty will be able to go into this yard without too much worry. I still have to worry about other things. The coyotes can't go over the roll bars. And then he's gonna put more roll bars here. But you know what's really cool? We now have an orchard. We have an orchard that is all chain linked in. We've got the orange trees that I planted 30 years ago. They're doing fantastic. There's three, three of them there. And look at all the oranges. Isn't that unbelievable? I can come down and work hard like a dog and be able to come down here and pick. Now, this is my variegated lemon tree that's doing really good. And it's probably going to do better now that I can come down all the time and be able to take care of that. But look at all the space I've got here. I've got plants. This is south facing. It gets sun all day. I could put totes or flower pots or plant straight into the ground and get something there, which will be in front of the orange trees. And I'll be able to come down and check on that all the time. And then here, this is just my thoughts, I get a lot of shade because of the deck that's there. Well, with the shade, if I don't want to mess with a lot of stuff, do a lot of extra work, I'm thinking, yes, I'm down here. I am actually thinking of doing ginger and turmeric down here in containers. Gets a lot of shade. I know we can grow tomatoes there because we've had tomatoes come up under here before. Let's walk down here. But this is like an extra little yard. Let's walk around Gary's tripod. Is this really cool? Now here is where I had tomatoes growing and they grew quite well. And the reason was they were falling off the deck and going through. So they ended up down here. And now I know I can grow tomatoes, but I'm actually thinking more turmeric and ginger. Now, why do I want to grow so much turmeric? You know, it's a great food to eat, especially if you've got arthritis or aches and pains, because what it is, it's anti-inflammatory. So that is fantastic. I'm actually walking along Gary's mess he's got here, and I don't want to interrupt him really. But his project, I should say, it's not a mess. But the thing is, like sometimes I have arthritis in my left shoulder. I know why, because for years I lifted a lot of heavy bags, 100 pound bags. Oh, this is like 30 years ago for years, 30, 40 years ago. And I realize now why would I wear out my left shoulder and not my right, even though I'm so right handed, is what I was doing was I was lifting these heavy bags with my left and tearing the bags open with my right. So my right shoulder's okay, my left shoulder bothers me. So periodically, they told me to take a meloxicant once in a while. I can stay on it, they said, as long as I want, but I'm not, I don't stay on anything. And sometimes if it's really bad, I'll take it for a day or two. And I was taking it and then I stopped, look at the chickens. I stopped and started eating turmeric. I literally would take a piece of turmeric, fresh turmeric right out of the ground. And I noticed that, did better than the meloxicant. So I'm gonna grow more turmeric and I'll be able to just come down here and pick as I want. But I think this is gonna be fabulous because of the shade. Now it will get sun, because there's the sun right now coming through the avocado tree, but it has more shade. I'll have to check it more in the evening and see because I do know turmeric and ginger prefer morning sun an afternoon shade. That's the way it grows here in Southern California because of our heat and lack of water. It grows better that way here. Every area, every microclimate is gonna be different. But this is just thinking out loud. I'm thinking out loud with you. Look at all this grass. You know what this is wonderful for? I grab it handfuls, chop it up and use it as a mulch. If not, I can put it in my totes or containers because all of this, creates compost, creates growing medium, soil, whatever you want to call it. So that's it. I thought I would take you with me. Look how hard our dogs work. Look at that. They work so hard, don't they? Yes. Oh, Ivy. Yes, you do. So that's it. So let's kind of hike out of here if I can. 
without falling over. And let's stay out of his way because when Gary's working, he needs to concentrate. We can take a peek. He is mixing cement and the cement he's mixing right now is that. He's got another cement he's gonna be mixing and I'm gonna do a project right now. That's what he's doing. But see the whole area? I could put turmeric and ginger on the other side. So let me hike out of here. So that's what's going on here. Oh, you're gonna follow me around. Okay, let's see if I can hike down. This is kind of a slopey area. So I don't come out here that often, but this goes straight down into Gary's garden. Now the four o'clocks, which are all through here and the hummingbirds love them. He will be yanking those out fairly soon. Don't worry, they don't disappear. They've got tubers or, you know, underneath. So no matter how hard he knocks them down, we didn't plant them. They come back. But the problem is this will bring in or give hiding places, I should say, for rattlesnakes should they find their way here. And we don't want rattlesnakes, do we? And they wouldn't know it, the dogs. Our dogs are really good. They don't bother with snakes at all. They don't bother with chickens or anything, Gary's healers. But the point is they could run through it instead of coming through the path and they wouldn't know anything like that is hiding. So when he knocks it all down, they can see just like we need to see. Let's hike over here. I don't usually come down here that often. This avocado tree is still alive at the base. Not so well on the top. This is where the hummingbirds hang out. They all sit there and then they go straight. I don't think you can see it from here. Up to the top. And that's why we extended a feeding area. I've got him in the window. First I had him on the deck and then that wasn't enough. So I put one in the window. Well, the one was fine until a hummingbird built a nest on it. This was about five years ago. She built a nest, she nested there for two years in a row. It was a three, I'll have to look that up. But let's say two years in a row. And so then I had to put another feeder on that window because I had it on the other kitchen window. Then more came and more came and one feeder, which was over there, went to two feeders, went to three feeders. And now there could be a dozen to two dozen feeders in this one area. There's probably close to two dozen feeders. Then the water fountains. What I thought I was doing was giving them more space to spread their wings. Isn't this beautiful? More space to, you know, come in. Let me hike over here because there's a lot going on. We don't want to fall or walk into anything. So what I was trying to do was give them more space, but so I have moved up in life. <laughs> My phone ran out of space. So Ivy, I'm up here. Come here. She doesn't know what happened to me. She said you were there one minute and gone the next. I had to offload my phone a little bit. So as I was saying, my goal was to give the hummingbirds more space. Ivy, see where I am? I'm up here. Yeah, she says, I didn't know where you went. So my goal was to give the, the hummingbirds more space. Oh gosh. And it didn't work out that way. What it's actually done is brought in another lot of birds. I realized that because more are coming in. Now why? Well, there might be a bunch that don't want to go so close to the house. Everybody feeds different. I mean, think about hummingbirds. They go from one feeder to the next, even here. It's like their instinct is to go from flower to flower. Well, there might be some that say, hey, I'm not coming to this place. It's too close to the window. You know, there's gonna be shy ones coming through. So by creating this, now I've got even more coming through and I've already got to fill the feeders. It was a marathon yesterday. It seemed like as soon as I got everything full, I was through a gallon. I had to make another gallon and another gallon, especially in the evening when they come through. So I've got all kinds of feeders here, but I'm gonna get more once the landing is done. I'm going to set up more feeders here. She's watching, right kitty? We'll have more feeders here. We're not putting any water fountains. I had a water fountain here, it's useless because they're not gonna, she thinks I'm talking to her. They're not going to take a bath on top of a thousand hummingbirds feeding. So what they do is they go over there and take a bath as they are doing right now. Again, let's see if we can zoom in for a second because this is just too adorable. Did this the other day doing a video and they come in and they take a bath. Isn't that cute? They don't care. Look at, look at, look at. Up and down and up and down. It's just too cute. Okay, they're gone. Let's zoom back out. 
So I'm going to leave the bird bass there. This is for my gardening. I'm bringing stuff up to put into containers and we're planting up stuff. So I'm gonna leave the fountains here or thereabout. And then I'm going to also try to make an Oriole station because I'm thinking in approximately two weeks, we're gonna get bombarded with the hooded Orioles as well as the Bullock's Orioles. And they nest all over here. I mean, they got places they can nest everywhere. But a lot of times they go into Gary's garden. And my daughter, she's got Orioles now, I believe it's the Hooded's, nesting in hers in the spring as well. Oh, my daughter. Oh, let's talk about her for a minute. So see what Gary did here? He's been working on this project for quite a while. You've seen it as it's been growing. Well, she did the same thing. In a little small backyard, she has now created gardens. She's got a full garden where she grows a ton of food in the ground as well as totes. And I think she uses some grow bags as well. And then she's got the space for her dogs to run. And then she took an area which was really smart to keep her dogs away from the street so they don't bother anybody and nobody bothers her dogs because you never know you know with anything what people are going to do or hand a dog she pulled it away like gary did here she's got the whole thing i'll put a link to her video she's going to actually show little by little as it's growing and she's got beautiful trees she's putting in there she bought them over the past year or two and now she's got an orchard she's going to have an orchard and I know some of you are going to go in and look at it and go, wait a minute, you can't put trees on top of each other. That's actually not true. If you go to Seamus O'Leary's website, or I should say his YouTube channel, he's been doing this for years. He did him almost shoulder to shoulder. I, I'm not exactly sure how many feet. And he, has an, he had an orchard of trees, or still does. If you look at my trees here, Look at these orange trees, how massive they are. They've been here for 30 years. Now for the first 20 plus years, they didn't grow. Not because I planted them wrong, because we have hard clay soil and Gary laid wood chips all around them, which fed the trees. If you look down there, which is something you should not do, these two trees here are only approximately two feet apart, two feet. And then the other one is down there. There were four. One didn't look that good. I had planted four trees and one died back and Gary took it out. But two feet and look how beautiful they look. So you can do it. You need to keep water up with them. You need a mulch. So she could use grass clippings and when they cut her grass, she can throw that there. There's a lot of things she can do, but you can do it. It's been done. You don't have to. You may want to have more space like down here. We have more space between the trees because that's how Gary plants. I planted the mandarin down in the corner. He planted the blood orange. I can't remember if he planted that one or not, or if I did. And then of course we've got the lemon tree here. The avocado trees, the few that are left, they're over 100 years old. They were really fairly close together too. When you think of how massive they were, I mean, look at those two. And that's not four feet, but I'm just saying you can do trees close. But ours are slowly dying out because, well, they're through their lifespan. But you can do them close. So what she's doing in her garden is she's going to zigzag. So they won't be like right on top of each other. There'll be one. You'll go back. Go look at it. You'll see what she's doing. And we'll get to see later on in the spring when they all burst into leaf and flower how beautiful they're going to be. And there's so many things you can do on your... Just look at this mess. I'm literally tearing this apart. Literally. No, I'm not tearing it apart. I'm moving things. I've been tying up my tomatoes. I'm setting up another greenhouse. But her yard is just gorgeous. It's going to be beautiful when it's done. Well, gardening is never done. Gard gardening is an adventure. What you want to do is keep going and going and make life fun. So you can change things up. Something dies. All right. So we cry for a second and then we chop it down and compost it and we use it for our new soil. That's what we do, that's all we can do. And if a citrus tree died, of course you can use that as mulch, chop it all up. You can either throw it in a pile, let it break down, or just chop it as fine as you can and put it around trees and things. So with that, I think I've done a nice little roundabout by having to come back up and start all over. But that's okay, gave you another view of what's going on and you got to see that those trees are only two feet apart, two feet, and they're doing fantastic. So with that, 
Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm going to get back to work. I have things I want to do on the deck and then things in my garden and then Gary goes down to his garden. And you know, that's a funny thing. That spot down there was like a dead spot. Nobody wanted to do anything down there. It was just rock and clay and horrible, but nobody did anything. So all those years it just sat until Gary decided to try to garden and it didn't work because of the ground. So what he ended up doing is, you know the story, he brought in all the wood chips and he changed the whole area. And then even now, I don't know if you can see it, he planted all those trees. It was all open, there was nothing, it was barren. And he planted the pepper trees because we have Brazilian peppers on the property and they throw tons of baby trees and without knowing, he didn't know, he planted all those all through there and now he found out they have a massive root system. Well, he's known it for a while, so he's been trimming them out. He doesn't really want to take them out completely because the robins love them and so many birds nest in them, but he's gonna trim them back a lot and do other things there. And then of course he's got his totes. You've seen it, go back and check out Gary's garden if you're new, you'll see what he's doing down there. We both garden differently. And so it works better that we have our own space to garden and we can do it our way. So now with that, have a wonder, she thinks, okay. We've done a video, I'm getting broccoli. I don't have that much broccoli. We, I promise we're gonna grow a lot more broccoli. Look at this, the broccoli is very sparse, but you know what, she's little. So even the smallest piece means a whole lot to her. Isn't that funny? Yep, it's good she's little, because otherwise that piece would not go over for a healer. With that, have a wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.